Hey guys, what's going on? It's been a minute. Um, so I wanted to do something completely different this week instead of doing an actual podcast. I wanted to visit the Remarkable Wrestling School that had just opened up in August. Um, I know that I've done a little bit of a video back scenes at H2O for you, I think like a year or two ago. Um, I did visit NEPA up in Massachusetts. I didn't record anything. I wish I did. So, um, so Kono's letting me do a little video for you guys. I think this is very beneficial. There's a lot of fans that reach out to me, that they talk to me, that they want to become a wrestler. How do I become a wrestler? Where do I go? So hopefully I can answer all of your questions. I got a couple of fan tweets. Um, so we're going to see if we can get answered everything that, you know, you need to know, maybe some basic information for you. And yeah, and let me know below in the comments if there's things you like, things you want to know. Um, maybe you'd like me to go visit more schools or, you know, anything you're interested in seeing into the channel. But I feel like this is such a beneficial for so many people out there. So one of the questions that I feel is very important for anybody considering coming into wrestling and they join a school, do most school, and you've worked with other schools and stuff, like, do they set you up with, like, a program, you know, a workout program? Uh, no. You have to figure this out on your own. Most schools aren't going to give you a workout program. No. They're going to, when you get to train in, most places are going to help you work out in some way. Right. Uh, besides the in-ring stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so, like... T to T when we open up, we have to like, 10 minute routine you have to do. Right. Uh, Red has this whole crazy, like, crazy routine that he does at home. Ludus, we had another thing. We're, like, we were running around the house. So they're going to make you work. But, right. Uh, and they're not going to be a program. You're expected to have your own gym membership. And come up with a program. Do something that works for your body. So, it, like, so, okay, so a newbie comes in, joins the school, has absolutely no idea. What would you suggest the best thing for that person? It, it depends on where they're at physically, you know? So, mm -hmm. so many people come in there and have a, a, a sports background, right? right? So somebody who played football in their 300 pounds, six, eight, yeah. they played football five years ago, right. and they're just not there. I would tell them to do the things that they learned from football. And the inner stuff will come from the drills. Mm -hmm. But if someone has no physical background at all, right. like, honestly, spend a little $10, go to Planet Fitness, and do a little 30 minute workout routine. Just get yourself started. That's right. all it is. There's so many different body types and athletic types of wrestling. As long as your cardio is decent and you have some decent strength, you're going to be alright. Alright, so how does it feel like now to have the remarkable school open? Wow, up? this place is freaking glorious. Like, getting to train with guys like Gabriel Sky, Desmond Cole, like Miss Cole Papuccia, it's always an honor and a pleasure. Because I get to learn from literally the best wrestlers on Long Island. That is just it. So, and you've seen like some of these guys like in the ring and see their success and everything and it obviously inspired you to be as great as them. So, you know, so here we are at the Remarkable. So I know, I know one of the questions that one of the fans has asked is like, what has been one of the most difficult uh, skills to learn in wrestling? Most difficult, huh? Most difficult skills to learn in wrestling. Uh most difficult skill I would say is psychology. Not a lot of people get wrestling psychology. It took me a while to understand wrestling psychology, but I feel like I finally mastered it. Thanks to Remarkable Wrestling. Thanks to guys like Gabriel Sky and Desmond Cole. So, I would say just study up on your matches. Get to learn from the people that you hold most dear. Like top three favorite wrestlers. Watch their matches. Study how they move. Don't steal everything that you steal. But hey, maybe if you study hard enough, you could be a great wrestler too someday. Yeah. So I think another question that um, the fans want to know is like, how do you balance like personal life, work, school, training, and then wrestling on the weekends? <laughs> I think it's a very it important hard. question. It is hard. My lord, it is hard. But I would say 
Stay focused, stay humble, and try to at least balance everything that you do. Thank you, brother. <laughs> but yeah, I would only just say the best advice is wrestling ain't going anywhere. So if you have to put off wrestling to the side just for a second so you can focus on your personal life, that's there's no shame in that. And you should be completely committed, obviously, if oh, that totally. you're gonna go into wrestling. You know, like it can't be half fast. Can't be half fast, can't be lacking, stay in the gym, do your cardio, do your squats. Most importantly, do your squats. People ought to forget to do your squats. And the shoulder presses too, purse. <laughs> but yeah. He's showing off pretty much over here. It's pretty it. much. So, let's see, another question that we have. So, uh, what are the best kind of jobs that work for pro wrestling training? This is from Conrad. Best jobs for pro wrestling training. That is a good question. I my work shoot. I'm a barista, so you know I basically have to be making coffee while I'm out here. But, gotta hold that coffee, all the coffee. Yeah, hold that coffee. <laughs> but I would say the best job, anything that isn't working weekends, because we're trying to get a booking on the weekends. That's where the bookings come in. So make sure you get a job that gives you off on the weekends. So like, what is your like? workout plan also like you know training like okay first let's start with this how often do you train i train anytime i can get it like three days a week is the best time to be training that's days to be training so you stay consistent you stay focused and you stay on the grind so any suggestions for that average fan you know they get into wrestling, doesn't know anything, you know, they're like, okay, I'm just a fan, but I'm really would like to get into wrestling. Well, I would say if you are on Long Island, come on down to Remarkable Wrestling School. <laughs> but if you really trying to become a wrestler, go to any school that's in your local city, try and, you know, start training, go to the gym, study your matches, and learn from your coaches, because the coaches that you have can be the most important people in your life who teach you about pro wrestling. Ooh, I have another one about character development. So we've seen you like change your name and everything. Yes, I you have. Know? So how quickly, you know, should you be thinking about character development and when, you know, if you feel it might not be working for you? There are a lot of people who try to come up with a character on the spot, which is like a good way to go. But you never know. Your ideas could change. It all, it all just comes down to what works for you and how it may change to yourself and also to your wrestling. We have the Remarkable School, so it's been open for a little bit over a month, so that must be so much beneficial for you, you know, than before. So maybe we'll talk a little bit about now coming here, you know, weekly to train and, you know, work with everybody. Having uh, having a school now that is, like, access to, like, should I, like, look at you or look at the camera? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Having a, uh, a school to have access to, like, all the time mm -hmm. is absolutely insane, uh, especially, like, for your tank and, like, in the ring, like... I feel like now, like, my cardio has been the best it's ever been because I'm literally here all the time, like, just building up, like, my bunk callus and stuff like that, and just, like, my cardio in the ring has just been, I don't know, it's been really different. I, I waited out, like, I remember when this, the school opened, like, about yeah. a month and a half ago, I was like, I was like, you know what, I, I'm going to I'm gonna test this out, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try and get here as much as I can, you know, without hurting myself, you know, too much, mm -hmm. and just see how it is when, like, when the, you know, the cameras are on and it's live and we're doing it in front of people. Right. And it has changed drastically, so mm -hmm. it is. I'm very grateful to have the school now. It's it's just awesome. It's like literally like twelve minutes. Away oh, that's class. awesome. <laughs> well, how often do like you know our classes at the remarkable school? So sometimes, like for class wise, it's a little hard for me to get here mm -hmm. because like I've been a very busy like the last like two yeah. years. Uh, so like Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays, mm -hmm. but like. I'm mo I'm on open almost every week, right. so I don't really get to be here on the Thursday class. Uh, Tuesday classes, I'm always here, no matter what. Uh, and Sundays are up in the air, like, mm -hmm. considering if like I'm booked or something. If I'm not, then I'll be here. So for like um, somebody like, considering like, oh, I want to join Remarkable, like you know, but I'm new and I don't know anything. This would be like the first time coming into a school training. How often would you suggest, you know, that they come to the school and? work out and you know even outside it's kind it's kind of different like for the newer people like um like if they they kind of need to like if they really want to learn they need to like be here when the classes are going like mm -hmm. for the Tuesdays, Thursdays, and sundays like me like i could kind of like show up whenever i want like uh 
we have like a, a group message and we'll just shoot over or shoot a text like mm-hmm. yo guys like uh, I'm ahead of the school. It'd be like a Monday. Like, I'm ahead of the school at twelve. Like if anyone wants to come get a work in, just let me know. And you know if the new guys show up, like I'll I'll work with them, help them out on right. stuff. So that, I mean, that's a plus. But if they really like want to extensively mm-hmm. learn, like from the trainer, right. it's like just come here on the class days. So how does that also transitioning from okay, like you were the student. Now you're getting booked. We're seeing you all over the place. Now you're getting like a new, you know new students coming in, like probably weekly that come in, maybe new or whatever. So now to kind of help out, I guess is probably like the best way because Kono's in charge of the classes. Mm-hmm. So how is that like? Oh wow! Like now I'm not really the student anymore, but like I'm kind of passing on the knowledge. It's it's very like emotional because I do remember uh, how like like a. Uh, I, I'm, my story is all mixed up like yeah. it's all kind of crazy but when when Kono found me I was like a lost puppy and like he was able to really just fix my shit like uh right away like he fixed me up and he uh I don't know if it wasn't for him like I know you know he doesn't want to like take credit and stuff like that but it wasn't for him like me Tristan Percy like Gabe like we I don't know we, we just wouldn't be in the positions we are like it's just it's just facts um it, it is very weird. It's very weird. Uh, I don't want to be. I don't want to be a trainer. So I always like tell him like, look, like I won't run a class. Like I don't want to get stuck in like in that. Right. Uh, but I can't ignore like the knowledge I know now. Right. So if I see somebody doing something that's gonna get them hurt, or I see someone doing something that they could do better, like I'll always help them out. Like, yeah. And even on Thursdays when I'm not here, the new guys they're here watching open like right. on TV. So. They, oh, uh, they, that I messaged Kodo. Like, even, like, your matches, I'll message him on Thursdays. Like, did you watch this match? Like, did you watch this? Like... <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's super busy. Sometimes, yeah. like, he won't even get to, like... I have to, like, bug him and be like, yo, yo, watch this match. Yeah, watch, like, yeah. let me know what you think. Yeah. And he'll, he'll, he'll get around to it eventually. He's just, like, so busy with the school and r- running with Mark Obel and stuff like that. Right. So, I don't blame him, but... Yeah, sorry if I'm rambling. No, you're good. <laughs> you're good. But let's see if we get some of these questions for like some of the fans. Actually, you know what? So you know, since since you're a wrestler that's out and about and everything like that, how beneficial? Because I feel like this is very important. Should like you know wrestlers like yourself go out for like seminars? Like you know, I think you know I see them all over the place. You see random all over states. How often and you know how how beneficial is it for you to go to these seminars? I'm gonna be honest. I wish I could go to more seminars. Mm-hmm. That's probably something on like on my list that I should do a little bit more of. I uh, well, every time like it doesn't matter like the experience. I feel like like when you go to a seminar, you're uh, you're just like a sponge. You're nor- you're absorbing the knowledge from somebody who has had more experience than you. Mm-hmm. Like um, I think literally one of my favorite seminars was Two Cold Scorpio seminar, mm-hmm. and that was like uh, it's crazy to think. I think that was like three years already, mm-hmm. uh, three years ago. And um, I remember telling him then, I was like, yo, man, like, I really hope that the stars align one day and I get to wrestle you. And then, like, three years later, I got to wrestle you. Yeah. So that, was, that was awesome. But it, I don't know. Seminars can be very nerve-wracking, but I think they're amazing, like, yeah. to learn more and just put it on your, you know, on your resume. Yeah, I think that's very beneficial because I know that's, like, one of the things that they wanted to know. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Character development. Oh. How quickly, like, you know, how often, like, so that fan is like, okay, I, I'm thinking about but they already have an idea in their head before they start mm. coming to school. Is that too quick to be mm. thinking about that? Or when does that develop? Personally, I mean, like, everyone's always going to have a different answer for this. Yeah. I feel like if you're prepared, like, like it's always cool to have all these ideas. Um, I think... Your mind will change once you get a feel on how you are as a wrestler, how you pick up basic stuff. I think your mind will change a little bit on what you want to be, mm-hmm. uh, opposed to what you had. Like, I'm the perfect person to ask about that. It took me like years, like to finally like find myself and be like, oh, like this works. Yeah. Uh, for years, I was like, I thought I couldn't like be myself, mm-hmm. so I like wanted to be like a serious guy. Right. So like now. I can implement seriousness stuff with what I do, but it's so much better to, you know, hide it and come out of nowhere with it other than just coming out the gate screaming. And like, there's yeah. nothing you can, you know, you're not reserved. Yeah. Like, that's why I like, you know, in my matches, you know, when it's time for the intensity, it's time to fire up something like that. It's like, people are always like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> so it's always like, uh, such a different, I love having like two sides to it. Like, um, 
to like a gimmick right or like like to who you are right so it was always you know there's that initial when i come out the gate there's when i start and stuff like that and then as the match progresses depending how it is it could change well i definitely have seen every probably side i've seen the face side i've seen you turn heel uh, yeah. in remarkable <laughs> you know so that was kind of it, it's interesting to see that right because like fans like you're used to you as a face and then it's to see that change into that heel and then it's like oh let me tap into something completely different like main event wanted to go heel like for years and years and years and they finally got to tap into that at wrestle like oh okay. it worked yeah it i liked did. it a lot i really did like the, their heel run i'm not gonna lie i kind of yeah. see it again yeah so you would want to do like i mean you're the champion now like here at remarkable which is pretty awesome it's so crazy to hear like i don't know like <laughs> i, I I, I will be honest, I've never, like, uh, he'll tell you the same thing, yeah. like, I'm never in my own shoes, so I never realize, like, everything I'm doing. Right. So, um, I don't know, I, I never, I guess, like, I, I do appreciate the journey that I'm on, mm -hmm. but sometimes I wish I I would, you know, look after it a little bit more, because I feel like I'm on go mode a lot, that I don't realize, like, um, what I'm doing right now. Yeah. Uh, like, I'm very grateful to, you know, be in all these companies that a lot of people, like, want to be at, and a lot of people are striving for, you know. I, I'm very grateful for all that. Like I'm grateful for all the, all the opportunities that have came my way in the last, especially two years. Yeah. Really, I've been doing this for about six years, like six seven years now, and these last two years have been. Yeah. You know, what I mean, it's been since stretched. your injury also too. Like, cause like you know, you know, we talked to you. You came back from like your, I saw you before your injury the first time, and I was like, who's this guy? We talked about this on our interview. You saw me like yeah. a month before I got injured. Yeah, and I I had the match. I think Ryan Redfield. Yeah. And then literally the next month, like, yeah. I tore my ACL. So, and now you're back. You're back with a vengeance. And I think one of the best things is watching you evolve within these last couple of years. And like you said, getting all these bookings and working all these amazing promotions, Limitless and Beyond and going up to Wrestle Open and ETU. And, you know, shout out to all those promotions, like amazing, amazing promotions. So it's wild to watch your ride for me, like, not knowing you to where you are now. So it's just absolutely incredible. So... Let me ask you this. So, like, you're more seasoned, right? So I think we're going to stop at this question. And, I, you know, I always ask this on my podcast. So now since it's been a little bit now, you can add to it. You know, what's a piece of advice that you would give, you know, for someone that wants to come in, start training, get into wrestling? Um, well, I, once again, I, I can't speak for everyone else. But especially, you know, if you come here, you... Don't ever have to worry about being judged, stuff like that. Uh, if that is something that's in your mind, you know, it was always in mind during wrestling school when I was younger. I was like, oh, man, if I mess up something, like, I'm going to get ridiculed and uh, I'm going to want to hate wrestling. And it, there, wrestling is literally a roller coaster. It is, there are so many highs. There are so many lows. Like, you can stay at low for a little bit and then you can be, at, you can be here for forever. And then it's, it's such a roller coaster, but... I wouldn't be doing it if I didn't love it. So I think just be yourself. Uh, take a chance on yourself. That's that's the biggest one. Mm -hmm. Honestly, that is uh, what I've been doing, and uh, I do not do not look behind me. So obviously, if you do come here, I will be along with Kono and everyone else the first person to welcome anybody here. Sure. Like, Tell us a little bit about the remarkable school. Um, it's the greatest thing that's ever happened. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, I've gotten immensely better since we just opened this a month ago because I get to come here multiple times a week and, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, it, it's really awesome. I highly recommend coming here. Um, I, in my opinion, we have some of the best wrestlers on the East Coast that come from this school and they're here every day. I've definitely seen you improve. Like, I know I talked to you like the last Remarkable show, like, you know, in the back, pretty much saying that it's like just watching you from the beginning to evolving to where you are now. So I'm sure that, like you said, coming to the Remarkable School, you know, coming here like a couple times a week, just like training and having that access for you. Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely, it's incredible, really. And as you, I don't know if you can hear it in the background, but we also have a, a workout center, you know, a workout area. I just got in a good shoulder workout, so honestly, it's changing. Changed for me in multiple ways, you know. I get to come here, do a workout, and go in the ring, which I've never been able to do before. Mm -hmm. So I highly recommend coming. How is it for you since, like, you've been wrestling now? You know, you got your matches, you know, you get book places. So how is that, like, coming in here, and now you're seeing new students coming in, and it's like, yeah. oh, okay, now I could help, like, tweak, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't How's want anybody that? taking my spot, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, no, it's really cool to see the new students come in here because, you know, I haven't had 
through that experience for a long time. You know, we would just been kind of freelancing and now we have somewhere to go and actually have students. So it's cool to see as they develop, you know, we got a couple people that are really developing really fast and it's cool to see. Right. So what would you, um, you know, advice wise, you know, like you're a little more seasoned now. Yeah, yeah. You know, so like what's a little bit more of like advice that you would give somebody? Uh, the highest advice I can give you is just uh, you'll feel a lot better about yourself wrestling wise if you just get in shape. Mm -hmm. uh, I wish I would have gotten in shape, you know, years ago when I started, but I'm starting to get in shape now. And it really honestly, it makes the experience in the ring so much better. It makes it fun. Mm -hmm. So that, that's what I would recommend. Just get, whether you are going to sign up, uh, get in the gym. Definitely. Any particular program that you would like recommend? Oh, sign? yeah, actually, that's mm -hmm. funny. If you guys can don't even have to go to the gym, you can do it at home. P90X got me and Dez in the best shape of our lives at one point mm -hmm. uh, for the first time. That was the first thing that ever got me in shape. So I highly recommend that. It's really easy if you just stick to it. Awesome. Well, thank you. No problem. Thank I you. I feel like it's very important that, you know, somebody wanting to come into the business, you know, yeah, you should have you got to be respectful. you got to be respectful yeah. of the people who are in the ring with you, respectful of the ring, respectful of the trainers. You just got to respect the entirety of the process, whether you're coming from athletics, acting, whatever. Mm -hmm. This is different because it's a medium that puts so many different types of art and sport together. Mm -hmm. So if, you don't, if you've never been part of the process, even if you have been, you need to be respectful of the process, no matter what school you're at, no matter what the reputation is, who's there, whatever. If you decide to spend your money there and spend your time there, you're going to have to give some respect to that process. I wanted to come visit the Remarkable School because I wanted to kind of help fans that maybe are considering going into wrestling, you know, thoughts. Maybe there are some wrestlers out there that just started training, you know, maybe that you can answer some of the questions. First, you've been open now for a little over a month, so congratulations on that. So tell us a little bit about the experience of like opening up the school. Um, it's pretty awesome to have like your own place. Mm -hmm. So like I have like workout equipment here and now instead of going to the gym, I pretty much come here every day to work out. Not just wrestling, but like weights and stuff like that. Um, like I guess me and my students have like, like a bond. Mm -hmm. So like I'm not necessarily their teacher. We're more so like friends. Like I consider them my friends and family. Like for the most part, they've been training under me for years. Um, and I think they've progressed like greatly over the years. Some of them are like the top stars on like the indies right now, I would say. Um, so I did train a lot of the students in like other places, which I won't mention. But that place ended up like abruptly closing like with like no real notice. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was the month of COVID started. Mm -hmm. So I had told them all like, hey, you know, like once this COVID thing is over, I'm going to open up my spot. Right. We're, that's what we're going to do. Like we're gonna, so if you didn't know, just uh, 2002, wait, 2020, mm -hmm. right before COVID started, like the month of COVID, I was going to do the first Remarkable show. Um, and I had it all set to go and everything. I had the card booked and everything. And then COVID kind of fucked us mm -hmm. over like real bad. So not only did like, there was no more shows. Like I did do my show and I lost out on money because I had, paid people, I paid for the insurance, I paid a bunch of stuff, so I was out all that money. Because New York, unfortunately, you need all this nonsense to run wrestling shows. Yeah. Um, so I was out all that money. Um, but also at the same time, the school that I was training them closed down because the owner didn't pay like three, four months of rent mm. and he got evicted. Mm. So, which sucked because at the time I had like 20 students and I built it up from like two students yeah. when I started to mm -hmm. like 20. So. I built it up little by little, um, but I had told all my guys, like, hey, you know, once this COVID thing's over, I'm going to open up a school, you know, so we have a place to train, and it's our own. Um, so they have access to the school 24 hours. Um, they can come in. A lot of them come in at, like, 2 in the morning. Oh, wow. Just hang out. Um, I have, like, all the streaming services on here. Mm -hmm. So, like, I have IWTV, Premiere, Impact Plus, mm -hmm. Peacock. What else am I missing? I have a bunch of them. Yeah. So I pretty much have like eight or nine streaming services mm -hmm. that they can watch pretty much as much wrestling as they humanly want. Right. And a lot of them do. A lot of them come here in the middle of the night, get a workout, sit down for like three, four hours and just, just tape study. Right. 
Um, and that's kind of what I wanted. Because that was, like, when I was young, I would have died for, like, a place to just, in the middle of the night when I was, like, bored, be mm-hmm. like, hey, you know what? Let me just go work out at a place, go inside the room, roll around a little. Um, let me have a place where I just sit down on the couch and just watch wrestling. Okay, yeah. You know, so, um, that was the plan for the school. The school was supposed to open up, I signed a lease for the school in January. Mm-hmm. Um, it was supposed to open up in May. Mm-hmm. This is a brand new building that just got built from the ground up. Mm-hmm. It was just regular parking lot before. Um, then I was told it was going to open up in June. And then from June, it went to July. Yeah. July went to August. And then uh, I was all set to open up July 1st. And uh, they told me the building wasn't ready. <laughs> so we didn't open up until officially July 15th. I mean, August 15th. But um, right now, I have about, I want to say, 15 students? Mm-hmm. No. 17 students. I have 17 students. Um, listen, I just love teaching them. Yeah. I love hanging out with just, we're friends at the end of the day. Like, um, yeah, I, so I mean, I, right now it's going good. Right. But the more people would be better financially for me. Yeah. <laughs> so talk, since we're talking about that, like tell like, you know, somebody's thinking about joining, like, I mean, you said access 24. So talk to us a little bit, like how often are the classes? How much is it to join? So right now we're doing classes three days a week. We're doing Tuesdays from six to 10, uh, Thursdays six to 10, and then Sundays we're doing 12 to six. Mm -hmm. Those are the classes. I will tell you this much though, like I probably won't get out of here till 12, one o'clock in the morning Mm -hmm. because Nobody leaves on time. Right. Uh, unless I really have to be home. I'm usually here, and I'll tell you that they're usually here training till 2, 3 in the morning. Oh, wow. They'll be here till 2, 3 in the morning just working out. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, some of them leave at 10. Um, like yesterday, I know uh, Gabe and uh, Brad, Gabe, Brother Greatness. Uh, Jesse just came on their day off. Like it wasn't a regular training day. It was Monday mm-hmm. when they came and they worked out. Mm-hmm. So as long as like everyone has access to the school, as long as you could kind of hold your own, right? But you're allowed to come with someone who you know knows what they're doing. So Gabe is more than welcome to come in here, right. whatever he wants, and the other guys are welcome to come with him. If mm-hmm. We have a group chat with all 17 people. Where they message each other. Uh, for the month, it's 150. Um, so it is three days a week, but it's really, I would say classes are run here probably five days a week. Mm-hmm. No classes really happen on Saturdays. Right. Nobody really comes on Saturdays, but mm-hmm. usually every weekday and like Sunday, there's people here doing something. Mm-hmm. One of the questions that seem to be like a repeat for me from fans is how much knowledge should you know before joining a school like if you know nothing like you're like oh I'm just a wrestling fan and like I want to be a wrestler like you know like how much like should they be going to the gym regularly should they already have like some sort of workout plan um I have people who come here and are just fans pretty much mm-hmm. just brand new and don't know like anything, mm-hmm. don't go to the gym, don't work out, have no sports history. I can tell you that it's harder on them mm-hmm. than it is for someone who like who did like college wrestling, mm-hmm. someone who played like football, or was did some sort of like sports, or is someone who goes to the gym. Mm-hmm. Someone with like that caliber usually catches on to the wrestling a lot quicker. Whereas mm-hmm. someone who is not as athletic tends to like be steps behind. Mm-hmm. I mean, eventually they'll come to it, but like, yeah. it just takes a lot longer. Yeah. Um, even if like, you're just playing basketball and you're like, oh, hey, I play basketball every weekend. That really helps. Yeah. Cause like the running, the cardio and all that stuff. And it may not look like it, but basketball is still a physical sport. Right, right. You know, um, if you have a background, it probably works in your back, in your benefit. Right. More so than just being like a fan and be like, hey, I want to come, but I've never done anything. 
Um, so what about also too, like, cause if we have, um, I, I notice this all the time, like wrestlers go, like maybe they graduated from, let's say NEPA, right? And like, maybe like they travel around and like they wanted to come like visit, you know, one of your classes, like maybe they're going to be down here for like the week. Like, are you okay with that? Like, you know, how does that work? Um, so right now I'm not really taking anyone for like open, mm-hmm. like, like open rings. Right. Um, I'm going to start like doing like select days, mm-hmm. like I think like twice a month, like maybe like twice a month on a, a Wednesday, I'm going to open ring up for like an open ring for anyone who wants to come as long as they sign the waiver and everything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but for right now, I really just want to focus on the students I have. Right. But Probably, I would say within like a month or two, I'm gonna start doing open rings mm-hmm. twice a month. I don't want to do more than that because then uh, people tend to just come to the open ring and not have to come for the classes. For the yeah. classes. Right. I kind of, you know, I have to look at stuff financially, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, this building I got it. Mm-hmm. may not look like it's, you know, it's New York. Mm-hmm. Thousands of dollars to have a school sign a lease and you know insurance. I don't want to tell you how much I'm paying for insurance. It's a lot of money. Yeah, New York's expensive. So, is so, anybody that doubts that New York's very expensive? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so character development, right? Like, so you have somebody come in here, right? Yeah. Like, how quickly, you know, should they be thinking about character development from the time of like signing up until like their first match? Um, it really depends. I can tell you, I will use examples of people here. Generally, when you have a character that you want to do, it's not what you're going to end up with. Uh, Desmond Cole, the big boof of Desmond Cole was not <laughs> the big boof of Desmond Cole when he came. He was something completely different. You know, like Tristan Ty, when he started, he was not the concrete dragon. He wanted to be something completely different. Right. Just um, same thing with like Percy Ryan. He was not that. He was something completely different that he wanted to do. I don't miss. It's good to come in with something, but odds are, not me. Yeah. Who's gonna change it? But eventually, you're gonna change it because you're gonna, I guess, see what everyone else is doing. Kind of have like your own little mix. I don't think anyone comes to class has a character set Mm -hmm. and sticks to that character at the end. I think gradually it's almost like a 180 and it's completely different character than what you intended to when you came. And it's on your own accord that you change it, not necessarily me changing it. That's interesting. I always wanted to know about like more like uh, character development. Um, So how long, like before like, you know, you sign up for class that you kind of, I guess, graduate that you're able to start having like a real match i'm not saying going outside of like remarkable i'm talking about like you how long you know before maybe you feel somebody is ready for a first match um i guess it really all depends i'll use tristan as an example Mm -hmm. tristan um he trained me a lot and he put in so much effort like he would come to class and days off we would come together he would constantly message me about stuff and like ask me stuff Mm -hmm. um and he really put in the effort and like i'll be honest i ended up wrestling him probably i want to say two to three months after he first started his first class Mm -hmm. and i will guarantee you we had the best match on the card and on that card, we're, we're like people that are on AEW, like Impact wrestlers were on there, former WWE wrestlers were on there, like top indie wrestlers were on there, um, and we definitely had the best match, mm-hmm. and like the boys in the back were telling us that we had the best match, right. um, but he picked up on it right away, mm-hmm. and but he would ask questions all the time, like, hey, why do you do this, why should we do this, why, blah, 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 mm-hmm. and ask away. Right. Um, and I think I know the answers, you know? I think I'm probably a better uh, 
trainer than I am wrestler. Mm -hmm. And I only say that because I'm the most um, unselfish person mm -hmm. that I'd rather give than receive. So a lot of times, I don't look out for myself. I look out for the person instead of looking out for myself. Mm -hmm. But to further that, there is people that come to the school and I don't want to say they, they don't put as much effort, but right. sometimes it might take them like a year, a year mm -hmm. and a half to have their first match. So I guess it's whatever you put in is what you're going to get out of it. Yeah. Like I know some wrestlers, like they still haven't had their like first match at other schools, you know, and I know like it frustrates them and like, oh, what am I doing wrong or, you know, and I think like I've said, well, maybe you should really talk to your trainer about these questions, you know, to see where you're lacking so you can kind of like better yourself so that you can get to that. But I guess every, obviously everybody's different into the development pretty yeah. much. Um, I had questions from some fans here. Um, it's also like, you know, like, so like I'll just put it this way. Uh, like, so the other place that I was training the guys at, mm -hmm. I, I thought, I thought Devin was awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, that's Nicole. Sorry. I thought he was awesome. And I always told Percy he was awesome too. Mm -hmm. Gabe was awesome. I said Tristan was awesome. But the guy who was running the school would always shit on it. Like, ah, they suck, they suck, blah, blah, whatever. And I was like, no, Percy. Good. Like, these kids are fucking good. Like, I was like, you can't tell me they're not good when you don't see them. Like, right. you live in fucking Florida. Like, you can't tell me like they're not good. Like, I'm with them fucking three times a week training them. They're fucking good. And I guess he didn't see that. And that was kind of like the catalyst to me wanting to start remarkable. Right. Is that like I want to give my guys opportunities that like I never got because mm -hmm. I think they're fucking awesome. Like. Yeah. I think, like, like, the point, like, Remarkable at the core is built around those four people. Yeah. It's those four people that I look out for, the mo like, the most. And that's not to say, like, my other students suck or not like that. But, like, I want them to give those four main people, like, the opportunities that I never got. Mm -hmm. So, like, you know, like, I asked them all, like, in the beginning, like, hey, who are guys you want to wrestle? Right. Just name me some guys. Like... And I think, like, for the most part, like, they've wrestled people that, in other places, maybe they wouldn't have got opportunities to wrestle. Right. And I tried to give them that opportunity. Right. right. No, I think, I think that's, that's amazing. This is, like, your core guys. A lot of people know who they are, you know? Uh, so this question is from Dave. He goes, uh, what should anyone taking your courses appreciate about wrestling? Appreciate? Um... answer that um I guess like I guess I teach in a very um uh, old school sense mm -hmm. of like understanding why you do certain things mm -hmm. um like I would say like I teach very 90-ish wrestlers yeah. mixed in with like 2020s mm -hmm. moves because a lot of what you see in wrestling is like, like I'll give you an example. Like, I could be the greatest fucking wrestler in the world, mm -hmm. but if I go to Bumblefuck, Tennessee, right? Nobody knows who the hell I am unless they like followed my career and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So like, I have to use like old school wrestling tactics mm -hmm. to either get myself heat or get myself as a baby face. I can't just go in there and be like, all right, I'm gonna do this move, this move, this move, this move. So I kind of teach them like from the very beginning like a psychology based formula and then tell them like hey let's use this formula change it up a bit but use like modern moves like nobody's gonna buy nobody's gonna buy a leg drop as a finish now. Right, right. you know so like don't just don't look at that match old school match and be like hey this is blah blah blah, blah. and a lot of like this might be really advanced, but like a lot of like wrestling you see is like very stereotypical. Like you've watched one match on an indie show, right? They're almost all the same, and they follow the same exact formula. Mm -hmm. And I don't necessarily think 
wrestling has to be like that. Like, yeah. if you watch, like, matches from, like, I forgot, what, I forgot, I had them watch, like, I think it was, like, who was it? Midnight Express versus, uh, Rock and Roll Express. Mm -hmm. Midnight Express versus Rock and Roll Express. I forgot what match was. I had them watch it, and predominantly, like, the whole match consisted of the Rock, consisted of the Rock and Roll Express mm -hmm. completely just destroying the Midnight Express right. as they were good guys, and they just completely destroyed the other team, and they were embarrassing them in, like, funny spots with, like, Jim Cornette, and they took over like 80% of the match. And then, you know, Midnight came back and then Rock and Roll was back and forth after that. But like, of a 20 minute match, the good guys, the faces, were taking over 15, 15 minutes of that match. Right. Um, a lot of like, I think, and that's kind of how wrestling is now. I think a lot of what gets lost in the psychology of wrestling is that people think like, hey, let's start with the good guys, winning for a minute, then the heel comes in, blah, 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 and it's predominantly like a heel match, and they get stuck in a formula that just like, it's the right formula, right. but there's ways to mix it up to make it make sense. Right. And I think that's a lot of what like I teach. Yeah. Just like formula of a match and how to put a match together. Mm -hmm. I, I, think, I think that's really, really good. Um, so Dave's next question is, if you have any advice for a beginner wanting to become a professional wrestler, what would it be? Um, I would say find a job, find a job that's like Monday to Friday, mm -hmm. where you get weekends off and you have time to like really dedicate to pursuing wrestling. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with like me, I'll just give you a little background, but I around maybe I want to say I think it was 2011 to like 13 2011 to 2013 I think I wrestled 86 weeks straight where it was just at least once a week mm -hmm. every day like not every day at least once a week sometimes three sometimes four times a week I wrestled every weekend um, and that's what I was doing like I just had a nice job where I ended up having every weekend off and I was able to go out I had a job where I was able to afford to just dedicate myself to wrestling. Mm -hmm. um, and, then I, and then I ended up getting a job, like a good, really good job, and you know, slowly like I started giving up my bookings because I had to work Saturdays, I had to work Sundays, and I kind of screwed myself over. Mm -hmm. I would say the number one thing you should do is, when starting wrestling school is try to find a job that works for you. That where you can, you can really dedicate yourself to this, right. and predominantly it has to be Saturdays and Sundays off. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, everything pro wrestling. He says, "What are some of the best kind of jobs that work for pro wrestling training?" Um. So, I was a, uh, I was like. A Department manager mm -hmm. at like a, a sporting goods store mm -hmm. Monday to Friday. It paid decent at the time. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I did when I was younger. Um, I know like a lot of guys work at like retail stores and stuff like that over here. Mm -hmm. Some of them are like account managers, teachers, stuff like that. Like teachers assistants. I think I have like three people that are teachers assistants. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would say anything where you kind of don't have to work Saturdays and Sundays. Yeah. Even if you do retail, like, you know, like, tell them, like, hey, listen, I can work Monday to Friday. Right. But I just can't work the weekend. Saturdays and Sundays. Yeah, I think you got to dedicate yourself completely. Um, do you provide, like, a workout plan, like, you know, lifting, dieting, or, like, is there something, like, you tell people that they should be doing? Um, I don't, mm -hmm. but... We are here, like when you got here, mm. everyone was working out. Right. Like, not everyone, but like yeah. a good chunk. A good chunk yeah, of people, people were working out, and right. uh, you know, 
if you, I don't want to mention names, but somebody was leading them and saying, hey, yeah. try this. And that's a lot of what happens. Like, mm-hmm. uh, you know, me and someone were working out before I got here at like five. So I was working out from like five to like 6.30 uh, mm-hmm. with someone else. And we were just sharing like gym ideas. Like, oh, let's do this, let's like, do this. Oh, I've never tried that, blah, blah, blah. Right. So, you know, um, as far as like a workout plan, I don't necessarily give you a workout plan, but if you're here working out with us, yeah. I'm sure you'll get an idea of a workout plan quick. <laughs> yeah, and you'll see in the video some people uh, working out over there. Um, oh, so here's a good question. So besides like, you know, somebody wanting to be like a wrestler, that's like most thing that people think, but there are people out there that are like, okay, I don't really want to be a wrestler, but I, I want to be in the business. I want to be involved somehow, whether it's like a manager, whether it's a ring announcer, a referee or something, uh, production, you know, like, is that something also that you can help provide here? Yeah, so I have two guys, three guys that are here. Um, for managers, mm-hmm. I have three guys here that are training for managers and stuff like that. And uh, you know, like I also have like brother Ray is here, mm-hmm. who is awesome. Who you know, like is multi talented. Yeah, I love, I love him to death. Yeah. <laughs> um, he's the best. Mm-hmm. But like, he also helps out with stuff like that. So like, mm-hmm. so a lot of times, like we'll just sit here, and brainstorm like ideas with got the guys who do the managing. Mm-hmm. They're also in the ring. They're working out. Um, are they doing everything? No. Mm-hmm. But like, even if you want them to be a manager, I would say it's ideal to learn at least the very basics and be within that ring. Because like a manager and a referee are super, super, super important. Like a, having a good referee during a match is one of the best things you could have. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I don't want to sound like a dick, but New York has the worst referees in the world. I've said this forever, and I will continue to say this, um, some of the worst referees. Um, not everyone. There are Is it because ones. they haven't trained, or? I just. Like, what would you recommend that they can do better? I think a lot of the referees don't take it serious. Okay. I think, um, uh, for like, in New York, a lot of the referees are like more fans who want to be in the ring okay. than actually want a referee. Mm-hmm. Um, and more it's referees who don't want to be referees. They just just want to be around. They just want them to be wrestlers. But I guess like somebody said, hey, I don't think you can make it as a wrestler, maybe a referee is the next thing, and, you know, like, they just don't take it as serious. Mm-hmm. Um, like, listen, when I started wrestling, there were some great referees, mm-hmm. and uh, those referees are on TV right now. Yeah. And, like, it's night and day having a good referee in your match. Right. Um, I don't want to, like, go crazy into it, yeah. like, details with it, but, like, Having a good referee will make your match 1,000 times better because, mm-hmm. you know, like in WWE, they have like earpieces and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of information is being relayed through the referees from wrestlers to wrestlers and, you know, like, right. you know, kind of saying a lot. I don't know if I should be, but like, you know, you know, wrestlers talk, but I, like the referee a lot of times will call spots. Use them as a decoy to call spots to each other. Yeah. And you see, like a lot of people like ask for wrestlers, like, oh, I only use this ref for for, for this. Yeah. So, um, but I think it's kind of like that's why I wanted to bring. But if you're like, that. you know, like, uh, if someone's down on the ground, you're selling, and you want to kind of relay a spot, and the referee is in the corner, not doing nothing. Right. It's like, dude, can you come here so I can tell you what to tell this guy? Yeah. But a lot of times that doesn't happen, you know. So it's. But, like, that's a lot, that's one of the big things that, like, at school, like, when yeah. I teach refs, I don't necessarily teach refs, I call, like, two or three in class, but, like, right. I have everyone referee matches, mm-hmm. and I specifically tell the wrestlers to call spots with the ref, mm-hmm. so that they get a general idea of, like, when they're in a match, like, hey, you know, like, I can use this 
you have to read. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Say something to somebody else, right. which you know, doesn't happen a lot in the Indies. Right. No, I, I think that's smart. Question, no, no, no. Good. Well, we were talking just like, you know, somebody <laughs> wants to come in to like, that they don't want to be a wrestler, but like that they want to come and do something else in wrestling. And, you know, is it smart that they should be training and working with a school pretty much? Yeah, I did. I mean, I yeah. did have, yeah. to just keep going further with that. I did have a guy at the old school who, um, he wanted to be like a booker. Mm -hmm. And uh, like he wanted to like more like backstage stuff, and uh, we used to do like student shows, mm -hmm. like birthday party shows, and I would pretty much book shows, and I'd have him book the show, right? And then I would critique it with him, yeah. So he got like a general idea of like what worked, what didn't work, mm -hmm. but I would give him like free range to be like, hey, this is we're gonna do this student show, mm -hmm. you book this. Oh, that's fun. And you know like. And then afterwards, we would like discuss like, hey, you know, maybe if you would have done this, the crowd there would have reacted a little better. Mm. And that I had someone, I he's actually here. He's not here now, but he was he's out of weight. But um, another guy who does music. Yeah. He's like a music teacher. Uh huh. And he makes custom songs. Um, so there's gonna be a lot of new like songs oh, coming cool. out. So um, he makes like custom themes. He's made themes for like famous people. Mm -hmm. Um. He's made themes for people on AEW. I'll say that much. I won't awesome. go any further with mm -hmm. that. Uh, but he's, he just helps out with music. Um, he, rep, he manages. So there's different ways, yeah. different things you can do. That's at the end awesome. of the day. Yeah, I, th I think that's great because I know, like I said, some people reach out, they don't want to be a wrestler, but they want to be involved. I definitely want to talk promos because I feel like this is such a, like, this is one of my favorite things in wrestling is promos. And sometimes I feel like it's a losing art. Kind of like, um, so any kind of like suggestions that you can give, I'm sure, you know, you teach that here also, like. I would say, um, if you watch a lot of like wrestling promos, your voice is, your voice, I feel like should change mm -hmm. when you're emphasizing certain things. And a lot of times it's like a monotone, like. I'm gonna come out there tonight and I'm gonna beat you up because that's what I want to do and like yeah. you know it's like okay like your voice should you know like speak normal and then show intensity yeah so like it has to have like different like points that you're saying and like low points high points mm -hmm. sorry no um a lot of what wrestlers do also is like They'll shit on their opponent, which I don't know if you heard this analogy, but just um, I'm wrestling Tiffany, right? That's it. That's okay. And I say, hey, Tiffany sucks. She's a piece of shit. She sucks. Blah blah blah. Right? Mm -hmm. so now I'm the heel. I'm saying that. Like, that you suck. Right. Now if I beat you, right? I just beat someone who sucks. Doesn't do nothing for me. Right. Now if I lost to you. I just lost to someone who sucks, so I fucking absolutely suck. <laughs> you know? So, like, you also, like, you don't, like, kiss the person's ass. Don't be like, oh, you're the greatest wrestler in the world. It's going to be an honor to wrestle you, but I'm going to beat you. Like, that's yeah. what people tend to do. Like, it's corny. Like, make it your own. Also, like, if you're a heel, don't mention that you lost a person. I feel like. You don't have to like, um, if you listen to like, watch like, I'm not saying he's the greatest, but like, Hulk Hogan, mm -hmm. as a heel, never admitted to losing. Mm -hmm. He would lose, and he would come back the next day on like Monday Nitro and be like, oh, I washed the floor with Roddy Piper. Meanwhile, he lost. Right. Like, you're a heel. Like, yeah. don't admit to lose. Don't be like, hey, yeah, man, I lost you. You got the better of me this time, but next time I'm going to come back and beat you like, Right. You, you never lost. Just yeah. you never lost. Just say you never lost. You yeah. know, um, that was just like three points, I guess, that I would say. Yeah, I think that's great. I love, I love Pogo. We so. do a lot of like, not we haven't done it here, but like the old place, mm -hmm. which we're gonna start doing eventually, um, is a. Uh, I would give them like situations uh -huh. and be like, hey, this is the situation. Cut a promo on this. Yeah. Like you know, like oh, this guy. This guy, you saw this guy mm -hmm. 
at the bar and stuff like that, and like he turned around and punched you. Now you got separated. Like, cut a promo on him. Right. Just random like things like that you find and stuff yeah. like that. Like, oh, this guy ran into you, and you just knocked down, and he broke the pot on the ground. Like, right. What do you? What's the promo? It's the most randomest things, and I guess like when you're like given like the weirder situations when mm-hmm. like your promo abilities really shine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I want to see those. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, is there anything else that like you want the fans to know about the wrestling school that they should know? Um, I don't know. I feel like it's like as opposed to like other places, I feel like it's more like a family like like I don't feel like I'm necessarily training them. I feel like we're hanging out and having fun and just I guess it doesn't feel like I'm like drilling them and like yelling at people and just right. like it feels more like a family thing. Um another thing that like starting next month we're gonna incorporate, I don't know if you saw it on the side, it's like I have fish bowls on the side. Mm-hmm. Fish yeah. So I have a fishbowl with 2,050 wrestling moves. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. The idea behind that is that like every single day that we're here, mm-hmm. like three times a week, for just the classes, what they want to do on the side is whatever. But, uh, during the classes, I want to go through those fishbowls mm-hmm. and pick out like five moves mm-hmm. and learn those five moves, like at random, like. Listen, if it lands on shooting star leg drop, I can't do a shooting star leg drop. Right. But, I mean, I know how to do it. Right. And let's say Desmond wants to try it. Like, all right, sure. Like, we'll try to learn it, but, like, maybe we'll go on to the next move. But the idea behind that is that, like, a lot of wrestlers tend to, like, maybe, like, in the moment, not know what to do. And, like, an example is, I don't know if you were listening, but, like, when I was training the guy, he was like freezing, like not knowing what to do, so he just mm-hmm. kept punching me, and I was like, hey, just do something besides punching, like you don't need to do that. Right. And I even showed him like, hey, this is like, if he's selling this way, just hit him here, you know, grab his leg, mm-hmm. hit his whatever, like, I think a lot of like what wrestlers do like in the beginning is they tend to not know what to do. Mm-hmm. So the theory behind doing the, having the fish bowls is that if you know at the end of the year, 2000, 50 wrestling moves. Mm-hmm. If you're here for the whole year, you know all of those moves. Like, there should never be a point in time where you're in the middle of the match, you're like, uh, what should I do? Or what could I do? Or what could I do? So that's like, I feel like something that's kind of cool about the school, which they have start at. But, yeah. Um, if you have any questions, you can message me. Message Umar. You can uh, email me, remarkablewrestling at gmail.com. Message me on Facebook. Instagram, whatever it is. Um, I guess that's it. And come see a remarkable show, or come pretty see much. Remarkable yes, shows. definitely come hang out. Uh, come we see. got six more shows lined up for the rest of the year. Wow. I'm so excited. Six shows in three months. Awesome. Definitely check it out on IWTV. Yeah. Oh. The fish bowl. Look at that. Choke slam. Yeah.